Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Why don't you take a quick break from studying and let's talk about the practical application of economics. Right here I have the worst video game of all time. It's just horrible. The gameplay is confusing, the graphics are just junk, and it has nothing to do with the actual movie. But believe it or not, this game crashed a multi-billion dollar industry. It revolutionized video games forever, including the games that you play, and it's a great example of everything you're learning in economics. Go back to late 1970s. Now, if you were a kid or a teenager, the coolest place to hang out was the arcade. You had Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man. It was the golden age of arcade games. And as economics would predict, the success of that market led to an increase in the demand for substitutes. In this case, home video game consoles. So now instead of just pushing quarters into a machine, you can actually play video games at home on your couch. That's not a big deal now, but at the time when there was very few home computers, this was huge. In the early 80s, the console market was booming with dozens of consoles and hundreds of games. And most economists would think that's a good thing, right? More competition means better games and better consoles. But a lot of these producers and developers of games were focusing more on quantity than quality. The market was flooded with poorly made games, usually from third party developers that were just out to make a quick buck. And the best example, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The 1982 movie, if you haven't heard of it, was like a big deal. It was a summer blockbuster and one of the highest grossing films of all time. But the video game was a disaster. By the time Atari secured the rights to the film, they only had six weeks to develop the game. And you can tell. Now, of course, the developers thought they were going to make a bunch of profit since the movie was so successful, but customers weren't going for it. There was just no demand. In the end, Atari overproduced hundreds of thousands of games and had buried the unsold games in a landfill in New Mexico. So the market for video games saw an increase in supply and a decrease in demand. So the price of video games just tumbled. At the same time, home computers were getting cheaper. And so people started to buy home computers as opposed to video game consoles. So the demand goes down for the video game consoles, the market is in trouble. Which makes sense. People thought, why should I have a video game console that only plays games if I can have a home computer that does games and other stuff? So in 1983, the market crashed. Sales on video games and consoles went from $3 billion down to $100 million, a loss of 97% of the market. I mean, video game consoles were done. Game over. But wait, in 1985, out of the burning rubble of fallen giants appears a new console system. It's Nintendo with the NES. It's Learning from the mistakes of the past, Nintendo came in and they established strict policies to improve quality. They licensed games, they limited third party developers to only five games a year, and required them to earn a seal of approval. This gave consumers confidence in the games they were buying, so demand started to go up. And by 1989, the market was back on track. It was surpassing its former $3 billion mark, but it was Nintendo that was on top. Now you're playing with power. And this is the actual NES system that I had when I was a kid. This is the one that my mom bought me in the late 80s. And obviously, you know, it's outdated by today's standards, but for its time, these games were amazing. I mean, Mike Tyson's punch outs, We've got Super Tech Mobile, which is awesome. You get like 1,000 yards per game, just go back and forth. The original Zelda, the original Zelda was the first open world game, right? One of the first open world games. And the reason you have the amazing games you have is because these games kind of set the foundation. So these, these are some of the best games. The original Super Mario Brothers, are you kidding me? Now the story didn't end there, it continued. Free markets work best when there's competition, and it didn't take long for other competitors to jump into the market. First it was the Sega Genesis, and Nintendo fought back with the Super Nintendo and later the Game Boy. But then in 1994, the PlayStation from Sony showed up, and then in 2001, it was the Xbox from Microsoft. Today, after eight generations of consoles, it's an oligopoly with three main firms fighting for the lead. But again, they're facing tough times from a new competitor, a new substitute, and it's in your pocket, the mobile gaming industry. And it turns out that the sales of consoles has been falling for several years now. But in the end, who benefits from all this competition? Well, we do. Consumers win. So the story has a bunch of great examples of supply and demand, but overall, it's a perfect example of how markets are supposed to work. In the beginning, there was a lot of demand and a new industry was created and a bunch of producers and developers jumped in the market, but some of them didn't provide what customers actually wanted. So they lost profit and they lost their business. It's sad when industry leaders, these big companies that everyone looks up to, actually die off, like Atari, 
Pan Am, Blockbuster, Kodak, these companies were huge and now they're gone, but that's just the nature of business. The free market is a jungle. It's beautiful and brutal and should be left alone. When a business fails, it dies and a new better one takes its place. So if you've been to my channel, you'll notice that most of my videos focus on textbook economics, right? Getting you ready for a test, multiple choice questions, key graphs and stuff. Hey, if you like videos like this, where I talk about the practical application and you know real world economics, please subscribe, share this video, and please leave a comment below. If you like this stuff, I'll keep making more, okay? Thank you so much for watching my videos. Take a look at some of my other videos where I talk about other cool econ concepts. Thanks for watching, till next time.